Good morning and welcome to worship at Oakland Cambridge Presbyterian Church. Uh, it is my pleasure as your pastor to greet you and to those who are worshiping with us uh, virtually today, uh, we greet you as well. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us take a moment to quiet ourselves in heart, mind, and body as we prepare for worship this day that we might be more open to the sacred presence within and around us. call to worship hear these words God of the prophet calls us today into your ways of love and justice and compassion that we might confront the rising tide of hatred and fear and evil in our world we call upon God and listen as we are taught Christ's ways of love and justice compassion and mercy that we might be beacons of light, bringing healing and hope to all the world. So this morning, give us courage, O Lord, to step out beyond our comfort zones, risking ourselves for the sake of your kingdom here on earth, even as your child, Jesus, did for us. Again, let us take a moment of silence to quiet ourselves as we prepare for the scripture. Let us pray. Loving one whose sacred image dwells in the heart of all humans, we come with empty hands we have failed to keep your commandment to love our neighbor, including our enemies, as you have loved us. We have instead allowed fear and hatred to seep into our hearts and minds, clouding our vision. So we are unable to follow the path you call us to walk with Christ. Forgive us for not loving others, for in doing so we have also failed to love you. Lead us out of the constriction of fear and out of the prison of hate into the wide space of your unconditional love that we may boldly live together as one human family where faith, hope, and love abide in and through us and our ministry. And then together, as a people of faith, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We welcome Mayor Stewart this morning, uh, who has some special music for us.
Amen. Jazz hands for Jesus. Mayor, thank you very much. It's good to have music um, in this challenging time as a, a way of reflection and uh, faith and uh, brings comfort and hope to many of us. Our scripture this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. We'll be reading in chapter 12, verse 9 through 21. Together, let us listen for what the Spirit is saying to the people. Let love be genuine. Oppose what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the state and extend hospitality to the strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. And do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Know if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you are heaping burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, we give thanks to God. And we're trying to stay on the right FM channel. I don't bump it too much. Let love be genuine. Let love be genuine. Oppose what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Back in the summer of 2016, I attended the Presbyterian Youth Triennium at Purdue. As Roman Lido and Megan Meyer know, from our shared experience last summer, it is a wonderful week with over 5,000 youth and adults gathered for fun, fellowship and shared faith in small group settings for Bible study and discussion, followed later in the day by a whole community of worship. The music and the message at the Presbyterian Youth Triennium is wonderful. It's always inspiring and uplifting. So on this particular evening in 2016, it was with great interest and hope that I joined a diverse group of Presbyterians from around the country who were gathered one evening in the lounge at Cary Quad to listen to a very important speech by a national leader. And in his speech, he spoke about shared values and love of our people. Going on to say, following that, that anyone 
who endorses violence, hatred, or oppression is not welcome in our country and never ever will be. And I thought, what a wonderful statement. One that as a person of faith I could agree with. If you listen to the words of the Apostle Paul writing to those early followers of Christ who lived in Rome, Paul might also have agreed. In those words, let love be genuine, oppose what is evil, hold fast to what is good. So it was with interest, then, to hear this same person say in other speeches, knock the crap out of him, would you? I would like to punch him in the face. I'll beat the crap out of you. And part of the problem is nobody wants to hurt anyone anymore. And I can shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and no one can do anything about it. Let love be genuine. Oppose what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Reflecting on Paul's words further, listen to these words then in a corporate mission statement whose values were reflected in their company motto when they said, we treat others as we would like to be treated ourselves. We do not tolerate abusive or disrespectful treatment, ruthlessness, callousness, and arrogance do not belong to us. Those are good words in a mission statement. This was the mission statement of the energy giant Enron, who, as we know, collapsed in on itself. Words. Words are just empty words unless we live them out in our lives, letting them permeate into our very hearts and minds and souls, impacting our corporate and political and social culture, our communities, our nation, our faith communities, our church. Maybe that is why Paul wrote to those early followers of Jesus, reminding them to let their love be genuine, to oppose what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Be genuine, by definition, means to be authentic. It means to be real, true, sincere, open, on the level. And I like this one, honest to God. Genuine, honest to God. Perhaps honest to God is really what Paul was getting at when he wrote these words. And as later in the writer of 1 John in chapter 4 says to the followers of Christ that in his community about being honest to God, about that love we are to have when he writes, those who say, I love God and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must also love their brothers and sisters. Put another way, in more modern terms, it might sound like this. Don't speak to me about your religion. First show it to me and how you treat other people. Don't tell me how much you love your God Show me in how much you love all her children. Don't preach to me your passion for your faith. Teach me through your compassion for your neighbor. In the end, I'm not as interested in what you have to tell or sell as in how you choose to live and give. I think Paul might agree with that. Let love 
be genuine. Oppose evil. Letting our honest-to-God love be authentic is not easy, especially when we hear elected officials from the highest office saying things about hatred and fear of others and encouraging violence while we see in our own area and state and nation and world violent acts on the increase, gun violence that seems to be running rampant, hate crimes on the increase, and evil all over the area and nation and world. Let love be genuine. Oppose what is evil. In his book, Beartown, which I highly recommend to you if you haven't read it, author Frederick Bachman writes, hate can be deeply stimulating emotion. The world becomes easier to understand and much less terrifying if you divide everything and everyone into friends and enemies, we and they, good and evil. The easiest way to unite a group isn't through love, because love is hard. It makes demands. Hate is simple. So the first thing that happens in a conflict is that we choose a side, because that's easier than trying to hold two thoughts in our heads at the same time. The second thing happens is that we seek out facts that confirm what we want to believe Comforting facts, ones that permit life to go on as normal. And the third thing that happens is that we dehumanize our enemy. Living out Jesus' new commandment that he gave to the disciples when they had gathered around the table was to love one another as he loved. And that is not an easy thing for us to do. It is complicated. It does make demands on us. It creates risks for us to live that out in our lives. It asks us to consider the sacred presence in all other people. And I think Bachman is correct. Hate and fear of others can be a much easier thing. Love makes demands on us. Hate really does not. Let love be genuine. Oppose what is evil. The late Nelson Mandela wrote, No one is born hating another person because of the color of their skin or their background or their religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. So here we are, the followers of Jesus gathered together at the table of Christ in our parking lot. And virtually out here on social media, here at this table, in the sharing of bread and cup, in the many forms that it takes in this new and strange time, we experience, though, the genuine love of the one who showed us how to live our lives openly, honestly, and in genuine love for God and for all God's people. Here at this table, in the breaking of bread and the sharing of cup, we stand together in opposing the messages of hatred and violence and evil through our nonviolent acts of compassion and mercy and kindness, empathy and generosity in sharing ourselves and our resources in Christ's name with our community, with our nation, with our world. My brothers and sisters, as followers of Christ, may our honest-to-God love be genuine, so that together in our thoughts and words and deeds, that we might oppose hatred and evil by holding fast to what 
is good. And what is good is God all the time. Amen. Mayor will offer us another uh, gift of music. Friends, he was always the guest in the homes of Peter and Jairus, Martha and Mary, Joanna and Susanna. He was always the guest at the meal tables of the wealthy where he pled the case of the poor. He was always the guest, upsetting polite company, befriending isolated people, welcoming the stranger. He was always the guest. But here at this table, even in this parking lot, he is the host. So come, you who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, for a better life, for a fairer world. Jesus Christ, who sat at our tables, now invites us to be guests at his table. So what we did what we do here, we do in imitation of what Christ first did. To his followers in every age, Jesus gave an example and a command rooted in the experience he shared with his disciples in an upstairs room in Jerusalem. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread, actually we take this sacred Purell, And this cup, the produce of the earth and the fruit of the human labor, in these Jesus has promised to be present. And through these, Christ can make us whole. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. He's with you. It is right, indeed, for you have made us, and before us you made the world that we inhabit. And before the world, you made the eternal home in which, through Christ, we have a place. All that is spectacular, all that is plain, have their origin in you. All that is lovely, and all who are loving, 
point to you as their fulfillment. And grateful as we are for the world we know and the universe beyond our knowing, we particularly praise you, whom eternity cannot contain, for coming to earth and entering time in Jesus, for his life, which informs our living, for his compassion, which changes our hearts, for his clear speaking, which contradicts our harmless generality, for his disturbing presence, his innocent suffering, his fearless dying, his rising to life-breathing forgiveness. We praise you and worship him. And here, too, our gratitude rises for the promise of the Holy Spirit, who even yet, even now, confronts us with your claim and attracts us to your genuine love and your goodness. And now, at least we believe that our praise alone fulfills your purpose, we fall silent and remember him who came because words weren't enough. setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, emptying our hearts and bringing nothing in our hands. We yearn for the healing, the holding, the accepting, the forgiving, which Christ alone can offer. Merciful God, send now in your kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on this bread and on this cup and fill them with the fullness of Christ. And let that same Spirit rest on us converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of him whose food we now share. Amen. Friends, the bread on this table is blessed and consecrated, broken, if you will, like a picnic of grace. Sharing this genuine love of Christ we will never be hungry. And the cup on this table and on your table, in your lawn chairs, around the parking lot, like the bread, is blessed and shared, like the overflowing of tears and joy, drinking deeply, we will never be thirsty. The bread of heaven, in its many forms in this new virtual world in the midst of the pandemic, be it bread or a cracker, a pretzel, a baked good, is the body of Christ. And the cup, in its many forms, in little Dixie cups or water bottles or coffee cups, is the cup of the new covenant. These, in their many forms, are the gifts of God for the people of God. So come. And together, let us taste the goodness of our Lord. It's kind of like a picnic. <laughs> Let us pray. In gratitude, in deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, 
Expect much from us. Enable much by us. Encourage many through us. So, Lord, may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of earth and citizens of the commonwealth of heaven here on earth, in our midst. Amen. Again, I want to thank you for coming this morning and joining us and for you out uh, uh, virtually, uh, joining us on Facebook Live or later on YouTube. Um, we appreciate your being with us and celebrating here at Oakland Cambridge Presbyterian Church. Uh, Mayor, thank you very much for your music this morning and the gift of that for us. Sam, uh, Maurice Wheeler, thank you for running our video production. With that, friends, hear this blessing. Let your love be genuine. Oppose what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with deep affection, thinking of others more highly than yourself. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. And may God's way of compassion, mercy, and justice, and love encourage your hearts and inform your worldview and shape your relationships this day and every day. And all God's people said, Amen. Go in peace, my friends, to love and serve the Lord. Amen.